if I'm authentic, my parents will reject me. If you're not in touch with that inner voice, if you don't hear it, the body will speak to you loud and clear. Once you reconnect with your authentic self, a lot of medical conditions can abate and even remit. There's a deep need to belong, a deep need to be loyal, and a sense of betrayal. When that loyalty is somehow uh, insulted, told you didn't feel, get the love that you needed, you'll be consumed by being liked, and then you'll be very likable and very nice. And you might become a helpful, very helping individual. Which is a coping pattern. Now, you can be genuinely nice and genuinely supportive of others, and still look after your own needs. That's human nature, I think. But a lot of people are very nice and likable and helpful by suppressing their own needs. Everybody says how nice they are. And when they die at age 50 of cancer, everybody shows up at their funeral and they weep about how nice they were, how selfless they were. Children have two needs. <clears throat> Infants, anybody, any human being. We have two basic needs. And the more immature we are, the more important the first need becomes, and that's for attachment. And attachment means that connection with another human being for the purpose of being taken care of. That's an absolute need of the small child. Can't live without it. Impossible. So that's one large need. Contact, connection, love. Uh, without that, the human child does not survive. Any, any mammalian child or even an avian child doesn't survive. So that as soon as you get past the level of reptiles, the reptile is, is hatched, the mother's long gone by then, and the reptile infant either lives or dies, but there's no attachment to a parenting figure. As soon as you get to the level of birds now, the baby bird has to be, have an attachment with the parents. The parents have to be attached to the baby, otherwise the infant simply does not survive. Mammalians even more so, and most so the human, because we're the least developed, the least mature, with the least developed brains and the most dependent for the longest period of time of any creature in the universe. So our attachment needs are enormous and they remain important throughout lifetime because we have to have attachments to form societies, social groups, without which we don't survive. So attachment is a huge need. We have to connect, belong, be loved by and love. That's just a basic human need. Another need, however, we have to function as full human beings is to be authentic. Authentic means that we know who we are, what we feel, are able to express it and able to honor it in our behavior. The authenticity is the capacity, as I said earlier, to uh, know what we feel, to be in touch with our bodies, and to be able to express who we are and manifest who we are in our activities and in our relationships. Now, why is that? Well, I think of a human being in the evolutionary period who's not in touch with their body and their gut feelings. How long do they survive out there in the wild? So authenticity is another huge survival need. So we have the need for attachment and we have the need for authenticity. Great. So far, so good. But what happens to a child where the attachment need is not compatible with the need for authenticity? In other words, if I'm authentic, my parents will reject me. If I feel what I feel and express what I feel and insist on my own truth, my parents can't handle it. And parents convey those messages unconsciously all the time. Not because they mean to, not because they don't leave, love the child, not because they're not trying to do their best, but because they themselves are suppressed or traumatized or hurt or stressed. So I convey that message many times to my children, believe me, without any conscious desire to do so. In fact, it was the very opposite of what I wished to convey. But that they're not acceptable the way they are with their emotions the way they are, that's the message my kids got when they were small. And most children get that in our society. And what does the child do with that? Well, if I give up my attachment for the sake of authenticity, I lose my relationships on which my life depends. Therefore, there's no question. What becomes suppressed is our authenticity our emotions. And then we become 25 and 30 or 35, 40, and we don't know who we are. And somebody asks us, what do you feel? You say, I have no idea. And how many times we've all had the experience of having an inkling of a strong gut feeling, but we ignoring it, 
We're ignoring it and we get into trouble. Well, that tells us what happened. What happened was that at some point we found out that it was too costly for our attachment relationships to be in touch with our gut feelings. So then it becomes our first, not our first nature, but our second nature to suppress our feelings, to lose touch with ourselves, and to suppress our gut feelings. And then we pay the cost later on in the form of addictions, mental illness, or any range of physical illnesses. But it all began with this tragic conflict that children should never be confronted with, but are all the time, between authenticity on the one hand and attachment on the other. And even as adults, so many people are suffering. That shame and that internal suffering, that, 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 that sense of self-betrayal is our sure guide that we're not being ourselves. On one level, that happens to a lot of people. And then we may look good in the eyes of others and yet internally we suffer shame because we know that we, we're not being ourselves. So what I'm saying is that at some point or another, if you're not in touch with that inner voice, if you don't hear it, the body will speak to you loud and clear. You're going to get something happen to you. Uh, and sometimes that'll happen in the form of illness or symptoms. And then the body's talking to you. The body's saying no when you're not saying no. If, if the voice doesn't speak to you directly or if, if it speaks to you and you don't listen, your body at some point is going to kick in. Or you're going to get depressed or anxious or something else. If you don't know how to say no when you need to, your body will say it for you in the form of illness. So chronic illness represents the body saying no when you didn't do it. Not your fault. This is how you were programmed before you had any choice in the matter. So again, it's not a question of blame or self-blame. But it does mean that to prevent illness, or if you have an illness, to deal with it more effectively, you need to learn to assert who you are and to say no. Now that might be difficult sometimes because the people in your life have got used to you as a yes. They've always heard you say yes. Some of them might not like you very much if you start saying no all of a sudden. And what you're going to do when you start saying no is you're going to find out who your friends are. Because the real ones are going to say to you, hey, oh, so I'm so glad you're finally saying no. And the ones that were simply there because you were constantly available for them are going to, oh, what happened to her or him? You know? That's it. But so it, it, it'll create some conflict which, which will <laughs> trigger all your fears about attachment. So you're going to have to learn that, you're, that you are more important than your attachments. That wasn't true when you were a kid, but it's true as an adult. Once you reconnect with your authentic self, a lot of medical conditions can abate and even remit completely. I'm not promising that. I'm just saying I've seen it too often. And, and, and there's too many examples also written up in the literature. So that, yeah, healing is always possible, as long as there's consciousness.